What's the best green tea for cold brew? During our travels in Japan, we have met with farmers that have introduced us to hundreds of different teas, and some of which have been served cold. In this video, we're going to reveal the best cold brew tea we've found so far and compare the flavor with a hot brewed tea. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could support our channel by subscribing and leaving a like or two. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're going to focus on cold brewing specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. So what I have here is the Shizuku Sencha. Uh, this is a tea that we discovered when we visited the small town of Shiran in southern Japan a couple years ago. Um, and this was introduced to me as the ultimate tea for cold brew. Um, so we're going to test that out here. I also want to test out how this tea tastes as a hot brew tea or normal brew tea um, and compare the two flavors. So what I have here is a cold brewed Shizuku Sencha. Um, this is something that's been brewing for about uh, four hours or so. Normally I like to stick to three, but I just I left it in a little bit longer this time. Um, so you'll see that the color is super cloudy, super dense, um, and we'll talk about why that is in a second. Um, so let's go ahead and take these leaves out. There's a little bit of a surprise in here for you. So you may already notice it, and that is that this is a mixture of sencha leaves and matcha powder. Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with both sencha tea and matcha tea. This is basically the two of them mixed together. And the reason they do that is to create a little extra power, a little extra strength when the tea is cold brewed. Um, so if you were to infuse this, as soon as you pour the water in, it's going to, um, you know, the matcha powder is going to mix in, create this beautiful cloudy infusion uh, that's going to give it a little bit of extra strength and character um, because normally the problem with cold brews is they're a little bit weak in their flavor, um, but not this one. This one has plenty of power. So let's go ahead and pour in about five grams here. For this, I'm going to be using about uh, 60 degrees Celsius water. Um, so this is normally what I use for uh, essentia, or at least like a, a sweeter essentia, maybe 60 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to use a brewing time of one minute. So while that is brewing, I'll go ahead and extract this. I'm just going to put a regular filter on top. You can see it really has this kind of fluorescent glow to it. It's almost like a, like a glow stick or something. Beautiful color there. And I think it's almost time to pour out hot brew. So this tea is meant to be cold brewed, but you can also prepare it hot. It's uh, June right now, so I definitely prefer the cold version. That's about the exact same amount of water. I never planned this out, but it usually works out. Get the last few drops here. So usually the most flavorful. Um, so let's just look at the color here. This one is a little bit darker, but I would say this is slightly cloudier. You can see, I mean, yeah, you can't really use the pack here. Yeah, you can't really see through either of them, but would say that the cold brew is just a little bit cloudier in color. It's had a little bit more time. So I guess hot brew first. Hmm. Interesting. I actually haven't had this tea hot in a while. It, um, it has the flavor of, uh, similar flavor to the Kasuga and Asatsuyu Shincha. Um, it's kind of got that sweet corn and edamame. It has a really nice sweetness to it. This is actually a really good tea. It's a really good tea warm, actually. Hmm. That's really good. Let's try the cold brew next. Hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. It's got this really fruity flavor to it. It's almost like, like a little hint of strawberry, actually. And the finish is a little bit on on this kind of vegetable note. I would say it's yeah, it's almost like a cucumber. 
Yeah, I would say like a like a cool cucumber finish, similar to the Katagane. Um, both of these are really good uh, cold brew teas, both the Shizuku and the Katagane. Yeah, so even though this is designed to be a cold brew tea, if you brewed this hot and gave it to me, I would not complain about it at all. It's a very good tea warm. Um, I guess technically this would be called a matcha iri sencha. Um, so sencha leaves mixed with matcha powder. It's not super common, but it does exist. You can find it. Um, you also have uh, matcha iri genmaicha. So this is, you know, similar concept, but they add the toasted rice to it. Yeah, what's really nice about this one is um, while most cold brew teas tend to have a little bit of a weaker flavor, this one really has that strength in the matcha powder. So the matcha powder provides the strength and the character to the tea, and the essential leaves are there to provide that sweetness. Yeah, I'm really getting this kind of cool cucumber note that I get with the katagane. So cool cucumber and the sweetness of strawberries. Um, but yeah, it's very dense, it's very concentrated, um, and uh, it's very sweet and very smooth. Hmm. Whereas this one, I'm almost getting like a, I'm definitely getting the sweet corn. This has more of the sweet corn note, um, more of like a caramel sweetness. So caramel, I like to think of, I like to think of like caramel, brown sugar, maple syrup. It's kind of the warmer sweetness. And then, you know, things like fruit, like cantaloupe. Um, as being like a cooler sweetness. And this one definitely has a cooler sweetness to it. Whereas this one, the sweetness is more uh, strawberries, um, fresh fruit, and um, you know, some steamed vegetables as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting, yeah, I'm definitely getting that caramel note. It's not as strong as you would get with like a hojicha or something, but yeah, definitely getting this caramel sweetness. Um, so for the cold brew, just a little bit of, of uh, tips here. Uh, I just use a small container. You can use up to 500 milliliters, um, but I like to make mine really concentrated. I just put five grams of leaves in the bottom, filled it up with cool or room temperature water, and let it sit for um, ideally three hours, but this time I let it go a little bit longer, four hours, and it, and it tastes fine. I would say overnight is going to be a little bit overbrewed, and one hour is going to be a little bit underbrewed. So if you give it three hours to maybe five hours, you're really in that sweet spot there and you're gonna get a really nice cold brewed green tea. Um, well, I hope you all enjoyed this tasting. Uh, hopefully you, you've got some inspiration to try some cold brewed teas now. Um, this is the Shizuku Sencha. You can find it at neoteas.com. It's the perfect tea for cold brewing. It's plenty of flavor, lots of sweetness, really smooth finish. Um, some other good teas for cold brew are the Sasahime, the Gyokuro Sasahime the Gyokoro Karagane, uh, the Fukumushi Yamaga. Um, you know, with these Gyokoro and Fukumushi teas, you really can't go wrong. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave any questions you have in the comments, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, but until then, we'll see you next time.